Hello and welcome to the second part of this Ketro course. Now we're going to start seeing how Ketro works in practice by following the Spaceflight tutorial from the documentation and we will be introducing some of the basic Ketro features as we go. So I'm opening the documentation here and here's the explanation of our Spaceflight tutorial. I'm going to read the setting. It is the year 2160 and the space tourism industry is booming. Globally, thousands of space shuttle companies take tourists to the moon and back. You have been able to source data that lists the amenities offered in each space shuttle, customer reviews and company information. The project is to construct a model that predicts the price for each trip to the moon and the corresponding return flights. Let's take a look at how the code looks like. Now I'm opening the Kedro Starters repository that lives inside our Kedro org GitHub organization and you can see we have a number of starters here. Let me go to the Spaceflights one here and let me zoom in in the readme. This top level readme explains what the Spaceflights project is and the different ways you can create the project and start working on it. If we go to the cookie cutter repo name directory here, you're going to see that we have a number of files that are very typical from every Kedro project out there. Let's start from the top. So we have a configuration directory with two subdirectories, base and local. So here's where all our configuration is going to live and that is going to contain all our datasets and parameters that we need. If I go back again and see the data directory, you see a number of subdirectories sorted by the evolution of the data flow. So if we go to 01 raw, we see the three primary datasets that we're going to be using. Companies, reviews and shuttles. More on this in a moment. If we go to the documentation directory, we're going to see that there's a couple of files here. We're not going to pay a lot of attention to them, but suffice to say that this is a good starting point if you want to document your project. Now, going back again, you see there's a notebooks directory, and this one is going to be empty, but if we want to add any Jupyter notebooks in this case that allow us to interactively explore the data, we should be putting them here. And now the last directory, the source, contains all the source code of the project, including all the pre-processing, post-processing, model training, and so on that we're going to do. So you see here that there's a Python package, and this contains the typical init.py that has to be found in any Python package, and then a pipelines directory with a data processing subdirectory and a data science subdirectory. In the end, this is going to be the result that we want to achieve, and we are going to start from a blank Kedro project so that we can gradually reach this destination by introducing the features one by one. Continue in the next video.